Hello and welcome to my Europa Universalis, may you and Texas guide. So, when you looked at my previous guides about some details and mechanics of the game, what I'm going to do now is to show you the first five years of Naples, just to get a feeling how you more or less interact with the mechanics and what you possibly could do as Naples so that if you want to start your first campaign, you could follow up into my footsteps. So, a lot of stuff I showed previously are roughly going to do the same, but of course more with the purpose of that I'm going to want to play this campaign. So I set up a new game and I'm going to show you from the beginning. So here's the startup event and let the game begin. So what we are going to do here is of course here, yeah, as usual, we are going to form up stacks here. However, we are going to prepare the first immediate war directly. Because the rest is locked in two major wars. First of all, the Hundred Years War is raging in France and England here, so they are battling it out in mainland France. But also there is the Spanish or Civil War here in Castile. It's a called War of the Two Peters, I think. Yeah, War of the Two Peters. So Castile, Aragon, Trastamara and Genoa are locked in a conflict here which can go on for a year, maybe five years, and we're going to exploit that because um, Sicily is not in our hands and Sicily is a vessel or a division, an appanage in fact of Aragon which is some kind of subject type similar to a vessel but harder to integrate and we are going to take it out as fast as we can. Now for that we of course need a leader so we are going to take our heir, that's pretty crappy, that's the opposite of crap. Uh, in fact, let's go with the siege here. The battles should be easy here, because Sicily doesn't have that many troops. So we are going to take our navy, move it to the Straits of Messina so that we can go in there. Also, we are going to immediately start building a spy network in Aragon to get a little bit of boost for the sieges we have. Also, we are going to make a claim into the Papal States, because if we get lucky, we can after the Sicilian war here, we can still jump onto the Papal States because France is still at war with England. But if that is not the case, then we can wait for the next war between France and England to then jump on the Papal States because they are guaranteed by them. And that's something we want to exploit when it happens. Also, I do consider the fort in Naples to be of not much use. It's just going to cost us cash. So we can delete it and we are going to adjust the corruption here because we don't want to pay for it. So furthermore we are going to select rivals. Can we select Aragon? No we can't. But Serbia is fine. Uh, Bohemia. No, England is fine and in fact... Yeah France we don't want to have as a rival yet. So in between what we are going to do is improve relations here because we want to vassalize Durazzo just to get more castles belly into, Bal into the Balkans to exploit it there. Uh, regarding to set up the merchants we want to trade with Egypt if possible and we want to trade in the Adriatic Sea to expand our influence and our trade options as far as we can. Now so far to that and okay advisors we still need advisors we are going with a siege guy because we want to speed up the war we are going to do then we are also going with the diplomatic relations and improved relations guy here and we are also going with hmm, yeah commerce, commerce production inefficiency basically boosting trade income always useful production efficiency urban is good for your cities however we don't have that much of urban industry yet so now we would need to investigate our cities and check out stuff but we already know that we have some uh, cities here we have some ports here and we are not going to do that much with it however what we are going to do is we're going to select all stated provinces, so we are going to select all of them, you see the red dots here. And then we are going to open up new slots, and in fact we are going to open up everywhere a sea salt industry. 
because as we know from one of the episodes that there were provinces like Bari which doesn't have a sea salt industry. And sea salt is normally always profitable, not the best you can have, but it's decent, so it's always worth it. Also what we want to do is we want to open up a forest, uh, forestry, timber, timber industry, um, just to check out if there's anything left. So you can't open one if there's already one existing. And every industry we open up will cost us five ducats, which are going to get invested into the province. So as we can check here now, we have 496 ducats. If we press it here, now we are at 471. So there were 25 provinces which didn't have a timber industry yet. So we are going to do the same with fishery, just to make sure that everyone has a fishery industry, because we have, have a lot of coastline. And in fact, nothing happens, so everybody has a fisher, fishing industry. Mm, is there anything else we want to do here? No. That's fine for the moment. So then what we want to do is check our biggest cities, which is these three, basically. Oh, these are the three important ones, because uh, Tarde has a harbor, so we want to build the city up over time. We check it out. Um, we want to build amenities here at some point. And this province here, it doesn't have higher education. Higher education requires a lot of residents to be present. And this is our largest industry, and therefore it's the best candidate to open up a higher learning industry. So requirements has 10k urban population. This one has 68,000. So we are going to open up it, open it up. I think Naples starts with one. Yes, it has a higher education industry, so that's fine. And here we check it out. That's fine too. Do we want to open up anything here? Yeah, we want to open up a shipping industry here because it also. We are going to have a lot of harbors, therefore we are going to need a lot of ship materials, but also we are going to have a lot of fleet. And afterwards we are going to invest a little bit of cash into urban industries in these three. And that's it for the start. When we are some, you can always do only one investment per day, so when some days have passed, we are going to invest also into commerce industry. But that's going to be in the next year. So, regards to policies, as described, we are going to pick the centralized state decision just to get the centralization slower, slowly up and rolling. And with that, we can go into the first year. So, we are going to increase to speed four and let the first year event happen. So, there's the usual lag which you are going to have to expect each January which is a drawback of the mod because it's so complex that it's really taxing on the engine and the computer. Okay, delegate taxes is fine, let the game begin, yes, and we are getting some pop-ups for the mercenary companies which we are not going to need. That's fine. And now let's continue. Uh, want to see that notification validate one important decision immediately happening at the game start is the succession of Casimir III and they are going with the personal union between Poland and Hungary when the Polish king dies I uh, know I think that, yeah the Polish yeah when the Polish king dies uh, Hungary is going to get a personal union over Poland that's basically the starting event which is on the long term leading towards the Polish Lithuanian Union because there's like a lot of dynasty exchanges going on here and it's a longer ex event chain that's why I wouldn't recommend starting here at start just due to the fact that there's a lot of stuff going on and you definitely need a little bit of knowledge depending if you want to go to Poland Lithuania or if you want to deviate from it so you could for, uh, for example try to keep Poland Hungary stable um, that's something you need to force basically and fight for probably yes yeah, so we can we're not going to select a naval doctrine just due to the fact that we are going to reduce our navy when this war is over 
there are not many events or decisions we require to do, so we can just ignore it for the moment. Yeah, the investment manager, as described, we are going with 30% all own provinces and let's do it all three years because we can afford it. And of course, we want to be notified when it happens. So we are good to go. And now we just have to wait for... Ah, no, we can in fact declare war immediately. So that's what we want to do immediately. Don't be too scared about this because, yes, they do have a lot of troops, but yes, they are also in a civil war here. And that's what we want to exploit here. So we ha just have to hope that they don't get military access towards Naples here, so through all of northern Italy. Because I think we can fend off the navy, we also have Hang uh, Genoa on the other side, so they are also blocking stuff here. And what we can expect is to probably that they are going to siege down Provence, but it's something we can afford to lose. I know, we have to wait for the 1st of February. It's okay, sorry. And now we can declare war. There's a second event happening in this year here. So there's another lag here. And we just have to get through it. Because all the economy events are in the first month here and every year. So expect at least one major lag every year. Um, but that's fine. You get used to it. So we are going to select Messina as our target because we want to get war score from owning the province. So declare war and immediately jump. Ah, there's a battle going on first. So and there we go. Captured ship, in fact, even. Really, really good. We are going to take the marriage with the Razzo here. And also we are going to proclaim their independence. Uh, yeah, there's a new Pope been selected. I'm going for light looting because we want to keep it. However, the Pope is for, uh, for loyal to France, which is... We can ignore it for the moment. Okay, our first battle here. We are going to win that. There we go. However, we have to siege down this province before we can progress into Sicily, Sicily proper, which is fine, however. Yeah, and that's the opening moves we can expect here, so now we are just going to wait. And in the meantime, we are going to set up a, a building. So we are going to select Tarde here, select it, and then we want to build amenities here. Design a project. And we want to build it to level 2. 20 bucks, that's fine. In fact, what we want to do at start, it's always useful to not just select rank 2, also add like 1 or 2 extra units. In this case, I'm going to go with 3. So it builds a little bit more than level 2. It's level 2 plus 3 additional units. So you can see here it needs to build 4 units of infrastructure to get to level 2. And it's going to build 3 more just to have a little bit of room above it. To, If for example a, something happens like an event or war which could kill a little bit of infrastructure. <clears throat> then you would suddenly drop to level 1 or something like that. And that's something we want to avoid. We want to have a little bit of safety room in case that something is going to happen to that province. And then we don't need to interact with it again and <clears throat> build it up again. And the local nobility or burghers are also going to invest into infrastructure here. However, it depends if they are rich enough or not. So you don't know that for sure that they can keep up with the costs they need to. Uh, they require to support it. What we are going to do is we are going to invest into commercial industries here just to get our trade um, stronger basically and also we are going to invest one and another nine here into Bari because 
the population here is currently shrinking and emigrating and we want to stop that. To make that happen we need to invest into the industries to raise the, the open jobs but also the wages they are going to provide so yeah we are going to loot it in fact. Now oh, we got some cash from that and of course that's going to hurt the infrastructure here but we can use the cash currently just to get the initial set of infrastructures going. Ooh, that's going to be close. We lost. Ooh. That's not great. Oh, well, that's fine. We have enough manpower here. In fact, what we can do before the year is over, we can support the aristocratic faction here. We can also marry one of their nobility. Going to do that. And also we are going to support the burgers. Promote and support commerce industries. And do we want to do anything else here? Yeah, we want to appease them a bit. So we are going to take a negative prestige and centralization for over time. Just to get more loyalty here and therefore more war support, more soldiers and stuff like that. And now we of course have to... Um, wait for our morale again. So we are going to move back to Calabria as soon as possible and then cross the straits again. We are quite in the early game so you don't have much morale on your units anyway. However, that's uh, fine. Okay, then you there's a new year event and you can expect to have at least one major lag every year. Depending on how strong your machine is, it's between 5 to 10 seconds, depending. Say, in the early game I think they are a little stronger, the lags. Um, in the late game they also get quite severe again. But it's the cost for... Oh, wait a second, here we want to go. And in fact we have attrition here, which is not cool. Or we are going to move here to get some additional blockades going and get rid of the... Oh, there's still attrition here? Why? It says 0% but 0. Point oh, no, I don't understand. Okay, all well, the morale is almost back at full again, so we're going to wait one or two months before we can continue again. You get a pop-up here, like there's a small marker that there's an ongoing construction. Ah, they're also running away already. And it's also shown on the trade map, so it's very useful to see like where are you constructing stuff or where did the lo local nobility or uh, burghers invest into your provinces so that they are building stuff. And right now they are only building, we are only building in Tarde here. Okay, let's go here again. And then we're going to try to fight here again. Now they're running away. Where did they go to? Probably in Kaltanisette. No, they are in Syracuse. And we are going to try to get rid of them. Okay, and now they are running somewhere. Probably there or Palermo. And we are going to hunt them down to kill them off. And then we are going... Oh, they are going... <sighs> Too slow. <laughs> That's the drawback of speed 4. Okay. That is the stack wipe of the army. And now we are going for... Let's... Oh, wait a second. Stay here. How much do we need to siege it down? Okay. Let's go for these two provinces and yeah, this one doesn't have, it's very important, this one doesn't have any garrisons for example, so it doesn't have any anything that you need to siege down. While for example this province has garrison level 1, you could build additional forts here, which are going to castles for example, which are going to cost you cash to keep running. So the garrisons are the more, let's say the population in the province or the province is paying for the fortification if you use them. While if you build a castle then the state is going to pay for it. Okay, let's... 
And let's continue here. And siege it down over time. So what we are going to want to take over is of course here all the cores which we have here. We're going to need 44 war score, roughly. And if we can get more than that, we are going to either take some cash or we can try to get to um, Sardinia here. There was a late major event here, which was hitting the White Horde, which is running into a, a large destabilization, or like, uh, like a large crisis here, which can either lead to the downfall or taking over by another Horde. Normally the White Horde is going to collapse quite heavily. Also the neighbors can jump on it so that they start the expansion into the Horde territory as the Russian principalities. Oh, they're building up units here. I have to be a bit careful here because I mostly have horses here currently. Okay, the Ratsu is improved here. And what we want to do now is in fact make them our vessel. Nice. And now we want to improve relations with the Mamluks just to make sure that they don't rival us because if they rival us it's basically a trade blockade and then we can't buy stuff from them. Egypt is, or well, the Mamluks are producing cheap food but also they are importing ex exotics from Arabia and stuff like that and we want to have access to that to either trade it in Europe or just buy it for our population. Now we are running into a problem so our manpower is running dangerously slow, uh, low and if you have low manpower, it's going to have multiple effects. First of all, it's going to regrow very slowly because it's growing from your population. But also, you're going to get some uh, manpower every year because it's going to be taxed from your nobles, basically. If you get rid of all your manpower by warfare, it's also going to hurt your economy due to the fact that you that the male population is um, well getting wasted in a war so you are going to have some economic impacts from that it's just basically you will feel it by a dropping of income not make not too great if you just are an offensive war but if you for example get siege down you get looted everywhere and then you also lose all the manpower you have, then you are definitely going to have a very uh, temporary weak phase just due to the fact that most of your population is devastated by the war and a lot of people have died. So sometimes you definitely need some... Are you going to not loot Palermo here because Palermo is also a trading port or a natural location with a trade location and we want to build it up because it's easy to it's close by to Naples it's the same sea zone so the um, communication efficiency is quite high and therefore it's easy to um, well basically reduce autonomy on the island because it's going from Naples to Palermo and then to the island and that's going to be relatively quick now we are going to hunt the army again and take it out. In fact, we are going to move here. Peace offer of trust Amara. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to accept this one. White peace. They're going to get a prestige ship. Fine with us. Now we don't want to have a marriage to securing the peace. Um. Arborea? What is Arborea? I don't know Arborea. Ah, it's ah, it's here. Uh, we could vassalize them. No, we don't do that. We don't know if we want to go to Sicily. As Sardinia, in fact. I don't think that we can afford the war score here, but what we might want to do is, can we? No, we need to occupy stuff here to be able to do that. So let's first of all conquer the island and then we can check out what else we can do. 
reboot here. Ah! Our vessel, in fact, has attacked Athens, which is uh, in war with us. Interesting. So there's an option what you could do as Naples, you could not um, take your course here, instead you could vassalize it and then integrate it later for a very low cost. That would pull Athens as a vessel, it would keep, the uh, Sicily would keep the vessel of Athens here, then it would transfer as a vassalage to you. However, because it's a division, which is harder to integrate than a than a, than a vessel I put properly proper I would just recommend not taking it that way because you can, can still diplo vesselize them later on they're not going to hate you that much for that war that you are doing here okay yeah war, war exhaustion is going up so it's quite high currently ah the first automatic investment has happened and you're going to get a rundown here of what is getting invested to so the investment was last year and they invested some into agriculture in up here so in this province they also invested into Salentu which is down here and stuff like that you can check out where they invested for example they put a lot of into into extraction which is mining so and this one has a quite big salt industry which seems to be quite profitable yes definitely and there's still a lot, lot of room to expand into so you can study it to just learn what the what the ai would recommend and does as investment you can do that to think about if you maybe want to push it further with your own investments but i'm just going to close it because i don't want to study that in detail now there's a new year event so there's another lag again and we are, it's also auto save so and there we i think i could if you want to reduce the lag a bit then you could put the auto save cycle on like five years or something but it's of course a little bit risky in case you crash somewhere um, because you always have the combined lag of the game events combined with the auto save lag so just be used to that and we are almost finished here. We got 15 transport ships and we got how much army? 11 plus 3. 3. Yes, 14. So we can ship the full army in fact. Interesting. Provence is not getting sieged on instead. Yeah, th this is a mess there. there, there. I'm getting really lucky here because depending on how the civil war is going it could be over already okay <clears throat> I'm going to wait for okay ah, I shouldn't have moved the fleet but whatever Yeah, it's all looking quite fine. So we are going to try to also go to... Um, so we're going to kill that army and then we are going to Palermo. And this one can siege the province down. So what we are going to do... We're going to also try to take over Sardinia here. So go here. Because ideally, we can kick Aragon out of the Italian playfield, basically. And when we got here, we have a better access to, in fact, Genoan provinces and link up to Provence faster, if we want to defend Provence, in fact. Okay, so, come on. Manpower is definitely getting low. We're going to use a lot of our population here for this war. <clears throat> okay. 
Now we can take all these provinces already. And however, for releasing Sardinia, we would need 60 war score. Alternatively, we could take them for ourselves, which would be possible. Yeah, I think we are going to do that. We just need to conquer one province here to get the uh, minus 1000 war score penalty due to not sieging anything here or owning anything there. <coughs> How are our ships? Decent. They need to repairs, but it's fine. And the good thing is that Genoa is in this war on the other side, so they are going to help with blockading everything. Ooh, Provence is coming, in fact, to Sardinia. Very, very funny. Yeah, sadly, we lost. Uh, we got discovered as a spy network in the Paper States. We needed 40 points, and we were like above 30, so that's quite unlucky. But fine, it can happen. Yeah. Now one thing you want to spend or like put your attention on. Let's show it after the one year event here. A new year event, I mean. It's going to be, we want to check out the institutions which are going to, going to spread here. So, come on, this is taking longer. There we go. So the institutions we want to look at is the commercialization, which is going to boost trade and stuff like that even further, which is currently spreading to our country here and all the provinces around because it started as a banking institution basically here, similar to that. And now it's spreading with the Euro point zero nine here. When the war's over, we are getting a little bit positive in spread here, but it's going to take a long time, 40, 40, 1442 we want to improve that and the best way to improve that is in fact to have uh, more trade here and one of the ways to do that is in fact to also increase the urban laws here so we are going to go for uh, the extensive charter reform here but for that we need burger average power 20 and we had 19 currently so we have to boost them so we're going to give them more autonomy which is going to increase their power and to counteract the stability losses we are going to incur from that we are going to feed our commoners a bit with grain so we are going with the full grain provision it's basically making the peasants more happy therefore stabilizing our realm in these kind of small reform times heading to. It's going to cost us cash of course because we are feeding the peasants with, with grain and food that we are paying from the state coffins. So that's why we want to loot, we want to have a positive income and stuff like that. So we are going to check out the loss of cash in a okay in a sec. So Catania is done. Nice. I think I say impact of the war we can already see that our force limit has dropped from 14 to 12 just due to the fact that we uh, lost so many people in the war that our nobility and our peasants cannot um, keep up the same numbers of people anymore okay we could go for this war uh, goal here and we could also think about could we get Mallorca here Let's try it. So. so we are going here. Which one has the lowest fortifications? This one has level 2. This one has level 1. This one has level 1. So we are going from. In fact, we are going here. And then we are going to take over Menorca. So here going to be heavy in regards to the war exhaustion here. Come on. Interestingly, the civil war, they pieced out Aragon here. 
Say also peace out. No. Genoa still in the war. So they peaced out Aragon as a co-belligerent. So we can expect that they are putting all the troops to Provence soon. Which is of course uh, not too dangerous. But of course we should uh, focus on finishing the war soonish. So we can hope for a bit of luck here in our sieges. How did they get there? Ah, probably from Malta and then they transferred it. Let's just uh, kill them. Yeah, they are sieging back stuff here and they are now going for Provence. Which is of course not ideal, but I hope that we can be faster than all of their sieges now. Yeah, that was the army here. More war score for us. And... We are going to release Mallorca as a vessel and then we are going to try to diplo vesselize that. I mean, where do they have provinces? Ah, even up here. Yeah, very good. We could go for France in the next uh, 100 years war. So as you can see here, the first war has finished. And there's now Aquitaine. The overseas possession of England. So that's basically their vessel, vessel here in France now. And... Of course, France is going to come knocking for that soonish, because they want to get it back. But basically we are currently in the phase where the English are very close to winning the 100 years wars. At least they have a good chance to win it in this state. However, they are most likely to going to lose. So, that's the um, thing we could exploit, because the war between England and France is going to be very rough. However, we have to be quicker because we want to, of course, regain manpower again and be prepared for a large offensive into France if we want to do it. I'm going, just going to finish up the war here just to basically show off the early game what you could do. And in regards to economy here, we got a little bit of cash. What we now want to do is to also build a harbor here. So to build infrastructure, we are going for a harborage here and in fact a level 3 one. So prepare to construct 200 buckets. Uh, bucks, it's fine. So we're going to expand this province heavily. And as you can see here, the urban industries are currently at a 44% throughput efficiency. Which means we have far too little residents here to work all the jobs which have opened up. But also, as we can see, the immigration is at 0.2 now, or almost 0.2. So the city is growing quite fast now, and that's exactly what we want, because this is a trade port, or like a province with a trade bonus. It gives uh, harborage infrastructure cost minus 50%. It's a lot cheaper to build a harbor here. And of course, it also has commerce output bonuses, so we are going to build this one up as another trade hub, basically. So that's the, another investment we want to do. We are going to invest 50 bucks of commercial industry in there just to boost that province up and make it ready for making us more money. Okay. There we go. I think now we are ready for... Ah, oh, we need a province on the mainland here. Ooh. That's going to be rough. Can we instead... Oh, that was the... <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, we have to reselect all the provinces again. Can we take over... No, we can't. Hmm. If we were... And we can try. Let's get our army. This is going to be risky now. They have a garrison level 1 here. Interesting that there was a fight. So take the infantry here. Go to Menorca please. No, not to the Caesar. Go to the Go to Menorca, please. 
don't recommend to be that greedy as I am. However, it could be worth it because then we don't need to go to war with Ar Aragon in the future anymore. So, go here. Also, we are going to get a massive penalty to war exhaustion by now. So, let's hope that they are not going to move from the sieges here. And I hope that their war exhaustion is quite high by now, that the sieges is, is relatively... Okay, this is dangerous now. The, the civil war is over. Death of Pedro. So they are going to get united again. So Castile just got annexed by Trastamara and then they are going to reform into Castile, in fact. So the civil war is over. And that means now the... It's going down the road that you normally know of Castile. So at some point the personal union with Aragon is going to happen and stuff like that. So that's why we don't want to go to war with them that much. Okay. Oh, it's still plus 50%. Ooh. Can we get it? I mean, yes, we would be barely above it. It's not looking great. We might have to fight some of their armies again. Just to make it work. However, we're blockading their capital, so that's also going to give us war score. And they want to peace out, but I want to get my war goal here. What can we do? Occupied by Oregon, Provence are occupied. Yeah, this is going to get... It's giving us a massive debuff. On our boss girl, come on. This is nasty. We are taking heavy war exhaustion here. Really, really heavy. But maybe if we defeat their armies again once. <clears throat> So we want to probably fight here, or which is better? It's all plus, minus one for the attacker, so we want to make a defensive battle somewhere here. Oh, come on, guys. Okay. Okay, we want to pick our army here. And then we go for a surprise assault here. There we go. And we beat them. And now we are going to intercept them here. So just die, please. And after that battle, we are going to try to make a peace. I hope that it works. So the next year event has hit. And we're already six years in, so yeah. Definitely. That's a little bit more than just the setup of Naples. Come on. There we go. They don't have a leader, very good for us. And now we can try to make a piece here. <sighs> the man <sighs> Why does it tell me that now? Do we really have to go for Mallorca now? Okay, what can we do? Can we... So, just as a note, I didn't know that. So we could go for these provinces here. They would do that. Do we have everything here? Yes, we do. And then we go for... Ah, it's going to be nasty because we have to fight another war against... Yeah, can we get war operations here? No, we can't. Okay, let's do it this way. So, no. We don't want a marriage with them. We are going to release Mallorca immediately. So, Mallorca, there we go. We want it as a separate state, as a vessel. And now we want to... Um, we 
we fulfilled a mission. In fact, we want uh, we completed unite the two Sicilies. So we are going to do that first. We get the crown of two Sicilies. So we are going to get centralization. Very important. Very useful because it's going to help us with autonomy. There we go. Color change, and now we are no longer Sicily. Now we are going with two Sicilies. We also fulfilled the mission for centralizing the state. So we are going to get a little bit of uh, strength of the air. So also useful and some legitimacy. And of course now we have to call the three provinces here. We can make Sicily states, which is going to help with the autonomy too. And in fact, what we might want to do now is to, for example, ah, we should have done a claim earlier. My mistake. We should have done the claim before that. In fact, we are going to take out um, Avaria if we want to. And now it would be reducing war exhaustion time and just wait for everything to decay just to get a peaceful country again. In fact, we are going to delete the fort in Messina here because we don't want to spend the money for it. And now afterwards, when we did that, we could expect, uh, ex uh, inspect all the provinces we took and think about what we want to build up. Of course, we are pretty poor now, mostly due to the fact that we are um, realm expenses, as you can see here, 42 we are spending on grain. So basically we doubled our state expenses, no more, tripled in fact, hmm. that's a lot. We tripled our state expenses just for the sake of stability, however our stability is still slowly decaying, as we can see here, minus 0.8% per day or per month, I'm not sure, I think it's per month, so it's slowly decaying, our corruption is still quite high, however everything is going to get updated now that we have a larger state. And of course, we are most interested in reducing autonomy, autonomy now because uh, I think this one is also... No, it's not giving us a, a negative on autonomy, but still it has an impact on a lot of stats. So this would now be a stabilization uh, a time where we would stabilize the country for like two, three, four years just to... Uh, well, give our population time to recover from the war, grow again, and give us more soldiers for the next war. And now we could check out Bari again. And as you can see here, we have a, now a positive immigration. However, the birth rate are still negative, which means that they are still not happy enough and probably too poor to uh, buy enough stuff to sustain a stable population growth. However, if we look into Naples, so they barely have negative growth in the city. They have an immigration of 0 0.19, which is decent, but it can still be better. We have to invest into it. And this city here, which we're going to build up first, has a 0 0.162 growth, very good for a small city. And of course, all the industries are growing and we could invest in fact into the rural industries too, because there's still room in farmland and mining, just to boost that province up further. It's already making 0.3, which is really, really good. I mean, compared to Bari, which is only making 0.44. So this province, even though it's a lot smaller and has a lot less development, we can tax it much more efficiently, probably due to the fact that there is a lot of trade in this province, which is pretty profitable with, your, with plus 25 bucks per year. So it's much easier to tax this province compared to the large one here. And that's something you always want to check out over time to like check, oh, where do, where am I making all my money? And maybe can, can I improve on that, like invest into it and stuff like that. So leave a comment and a like if you want me to continue this campaign. So see you next time.